Today, I am going to explain an Indian psychological drama film called Ter Zameen Par. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. Ishan is an eight-year-old imaginative kid, widely known as a troublemaker among his mates. He fails every subject and is the lowest-ranking student in his classroom. He is in his second year of third grade, and by the looks of his report card, he will have to repeat the same grade again. In contrast to Ishan, his elder brother Johan is an ideal student. Outside studies, he plays tennis and is competing in the upcoming Interstate Tennis Championship. Ishan frequently gets into fights with the neighborhood kids who bully him. One day, a kid's mother complains about Ishan's behavior to his father, Nand Kishore. He has to embarrassingly apologize to the kid and his mother. After they leave, he shoves Ishan to the floor to discipline him. Although Nand Kishore loves his children, he is too harsh on Ishan. He believes that Ishan's low scores and inability to do basic tasks are because of his laziness. The next day at school, Ishan's English teacher asks him to read a line from a book. He tries his best, but can hardly form a word. He has difficulty in understanding the letters, but the teachers mistake it for him being a brat. When she repeatedly urges him to read, he yells gibberish <laughs> and is sent out of the class. It is not a new thing for Ishan to be punished. In fact, he spends most of his time outside, rather than studying, because the teachers think of him as a disturbance to the other students. That day, Ishan hadn't done his math homework. To avoid facing the math teacher, he runs away from school and spends the entire day wandering around the neighborhood. He enjoys the day to his fullest, buying ice cream, spending time by the sea, and analyzing the passersby. By the end of the day, he returns to his school bus without anyone noticing his absence. At home, we see him make a beautiful painting. Ishan loves to paint, and his imaginative mind helps the cause, resulting in over-the-top pieces. Later, his mother Maya tries to tutor him and make him do his homework. She notices that his handwriting is awful, and he can hardly spell anything right. She associates his inability with laziness and scolds him like everyone else. The next day, Ishan will have to provide his teacher with an absent note from his parents. Scared of getting in trouble, he begs his brother to write the note for him. Johan makes him promise he will never skip school again and writes the note. The kid shows it to his teacher, who doesn't question its authenticity. He also pretends to cough to make it seem like he was actually sick. That day, the math teacher surprises the kids with a test. Ishan is handed the test paper, but to him, the letters look like they're dancing. The first question asks him the multiplication of three with nine. In his head, the kid imagines the third planet Earth and the ninth planet Pluto fighting each other. He fantasizes about the Earth destroying Pluto and rationalizes that the answer is three. Leaving the rest of the questions blank, he submits the test. When asked by his friends, he confidently claims that he enjoyed the test thoroughly. The next day, Nand Kishore returns from a business trip. Ishan is overjoyed by his father's return and hugs him dearly. However, during breakfast, Nand Kishore finds the fake absent note from the day before. Upon investigating, he finds out about Ishan running away from school and wandering alone in the streets. The very next day, the parents go to meet his teachers and the principal who condemn his behavior in class. They also find out about the recent math test and its results. The principal assumes Ishan is a special child who needs to be sent to school for children with disabilities. Nand Kishore is horrified at the thought of his son being disabled. Both parents are worried about their kid's future, so they decide to send him to a boarding school. Ishan is completely against the idea. He rebels and cries, begging them to keep him home. And although the parents do not want to be separated from him either, they do what they think will be best for him. That night, Ishan dreams of losing his mother in a crowd and wakes up screaming. When she tries to calm him down, he promises to study harder if they let him stay home. This breaks Maya's heart, but Nand Kishore is adamant about his decision. The day finally comes when Ishan is taken to the boarding school in the countryside. He will have to share a dorm with other children, and will only be allowed to meet his family once a month. It is a nightmare for the eight-year-old, who has never been away from his home. The hostel warden welcomes him by declaring that his old ways won't be tolerated here. After touring the school, the family leaves with a heavy heart. Ishan just watches their car drive away with teary eyes. He stays like that for several minutes, even after the car vanishes from his view. 
When it starts to get dark, he walks inside the hostel while still crying. He doesn't talk to anyone and hardly eats dinner. At night, when he cannot sleep, he goes to the bathroom and cries quietly, missing his mother. Meanwhile, Maya reaches home and goes through Ishan's belongings. To her dismay, she finds a flip book of him being taken away from his family. The book breaks her heart, and she realizes how much the kid dreads being away from them. In the hostel, Ishan struggles to do normal things, like tying his tie and shoelaces. That's okay, Ishan. I still struggle with those things, too. On his first day, the Hindi teacher, Mr. Tiwari, makes him sit on the first bench with the class topper, Rajan. The teachers soon realize that Ishan isn't normal. He hardly pays attention in class and is physically punished by his art teacher. Nothing changes from how he was in the previous school. He is always sent outside the class as punishment and is excluded from the class activities for ruining them. With time, he gets so frustrated that he tears his books apart and throws them into the bin. He stops trying to do better in school and goes into a spiral of depression and self-loathing. When his parents come to meet him after a month, he locks himself inside a room and bursts out crying for the first time since he last saw them. On being urged, he runs outside and takes several laps of the basketball court to rebel. The family takes him to a hotel for the night to give him a break from his life at the hostel. Johan gives him a hamper of painting supplies as a gift, but little does he know, Ishan has cut out his creative side and stopped painting altogether. The next day, the family bids him farewell and leaves him alone yet again. Later that day, Ishan is the lowest he has ever been. He looks down from the terrace of the school, thinking about how it would feel to jump from that height. His only friend, Rajan, interrupts his thoughts and tells him about their new art teacher. Ishan doesn't think much of it because no teacher has ever helped him. However, it is surprising to the kids that the new teacher, Ram, enters the class in a Joker costume. He sings a song, plays a flute, makes them dance, and lets them enjoy the class, in contrast to all the other teachers. While the old Ishan would have loved this, the depressed one doesn't participate in any of it. As their first task, the students are asked to draw or paint anything they want. Ram wants them to show their creative side, so he knows what he has to work on next. The children start to draw several things, all different from one another, but Ishan doesn't even touch the paper. Initially, Ram assumes that the kid is taking some time to think, but even when the class ends, Ishan's paper is still blank. Worried, Ram asks him what is wrong, but doesn't get a reply. That evening, Maya calls to talk to Ishan, but he only holds the phone to his ears and doesn't say anything. He is informed that they will have to postpone the next visit by a week because of Johan's tennis competition. To Ishan, this only confirms that his family doesn't care about him. He sheds a single tear and walks away without saying anything. The next day, Ram sees Ishan kneeling down outside the classroom. Intrigued by his behavior, he asks Rajan about him. Rajan reveals that Ishan has difficulty understanding letters, no matter how hard he tries. Ram teaches in a school for disabled children, so he has an eye out for kids who are special. To find out more about Ishan, he goes through his old notebooks and finds a pattern of similar mistakes. Even while teaching the special children, he cannot get the thought of Ishan out of his head. He used to have the same problem in his childhood, so he feels sympathetic to the kid. Weeks later, he recognizes what Ishan's actual problem is, and travels to his hometown to meet his parents. They welcome him and let him take a look at Ishan's bedroom. Ram is surprised to find out that Ishan used to paint. This makes him even sadder that the kid lost his sparkle because of the pressure that was put on him. Nandkishore belittles his son, claiming that he is lazy and he hates studying. Ram retaliates and shows him the pattern in Ishan's mistakes. He often inverts the letters, as if he has difficulty differentiating between them. Still, the father associates it with laziness, but Ram bluntly claims that he is wrong. He declares Ishan has a neurological condition called dyslexia that causes him to not understand certain patterns, like letters and words. In addition, he has difficulty coordinating, which causes him to not be able to tie his shoes. The kid must have been suffering so much because no one understood that he couldn't read and assumed he was just being lazy. So in other words, it's the parents who are being lazy. Oh snap. Nandkishore thinks Ram is calling his son a retard and lashes out at him. To make him understand, Ram asks him to read foreign letters written on a box. When Nandkishore is scolded for not understanding the letters, he finally realizes what his kid must be going through. Still, he refuses to acknowledge that his son can make a living out of his only passion painting. 
Ram is determined to prove him wrong. When he returns to school the next day, he teaches the kids about all the famous historical figures who weren't so good at studying when they were children. He gives them examples of scientists, actors, and philosophers, which makes Ishan feel a lot better about himself. When Ram asks them who invented the light bulb, Ishan speaks for the first time in weeks and answers Thomas Edison. Ram sees a shimmer of hope for the boy to learn. Later that day, Ishan is by the pond when he uses rubber bands and leaves to make a working boat. Ram is so impressed that he brings the structure home and keeps it as a decoration. Ishan's creative senses start to flow again, but he still has a long way to go before learning to study like the other kids his age. One day, Ram goes to the school's principal and tells him about Ishan's problem. The principal suggests they send him to the school for children with special needs, but Ram is confident that Ishan can study with the regular kids. He suggests that teachers understand the kid's problem and help him accordingly. When the principal says it is not possible, Ram offers to teach Ishan every day after school. The principal allows it, for the sake of the child. Starting the next day, Ram uses various innovative methods to help Ishan differentiate letters of the alphabet. They learn using sandboxes, Play-Doh, sensory methods, and so on. Ishan also takes help from audiobooks and stairs to learn to calculate. In only two months, he begins to understand the letters that other teachers couldn't teach him in several years. One day, Nand Kishore comes to the school to talk to Ram and boast about how they are researching more about their son's condition. He wants Ram to know that he's not an absent father and is proud to be the way he is. Ram, on the other hand, blames the father for being the reason the kid lost self-confidence, which even Nand Kishore cannot deny. On his way out, he sees Ishan trying to read from the notice board. Regretful of unknowingly hurting his child, he tears up and cannot get himself to face him. A few days later, Ram organizes a painting competition for both teachers and the students of the school. Everyone gathers in the amphitheater and participates. Ishan uses the painting supplies that he was gifted by his brother for the first time. The competition starts and everyone gets busy drawing. Even the teachers enjoy the event and do their best. By the end of it, Ishan creates a beautiful painting of himself sitting by the pond. He goes to the front to submit the painting and sees that Ram has painted a portrait of him. He is left speechless at the sight. A while later, it is announced that the winning painting will be on the front of the new edition of their yearbook. The principal proclaims that the decision was difficult because two paintings stood out the most, Ram's and Ishan's. In the end, Ishan is declared the winner, while the second prize goes to Ram. The crowd erupts in cheers. For the first time in his life, Ishan feels recognized for his talent. He cannot help but cry and runs to his teacher to hug him. In the last scene, Maya and Nankishore come to the school for the end of the year parent-teacher meeting. The principal boasts about Ishan's talent, showing them his painting on the front of the school's yearbook. Unused to the new attention, the parents are left shocked. The principal also praises Ram for doing a great job teaching the kid in the way he needed it. Later, the parents meet Ishan's teachers, who show them the report card and compliment the kid's undeniable progress. Outside, the couple watches their son playing and cry tears of happiness. Nand Kishore thanks Ram for helping Ishan and apologizes for his behavior. Lastly, Ishan bids farewell to Ram and goes back to his hometown for a vacation.